Wallace. And I have Don Holling here with me. Three phases, dressage, cross country, show jump. And you're out on course and something's going wrong or going right. You know how to react to what they're doing. It was built originally to be a schooling facility and so everything's set up very conveniently. Welcome to the John and Rick Show, the voice of the eventing radio show, brought to you right here in Ocala from the uh, Horse Trailer Pro Studio. Very Damn. excited to be back in studio today, Rick. Yeah, the voice of the eventing radio show. Did you say that already? I did. You always do this. To I me. love that because I don't <laughs> listen to you. <laughs> you don't hear a word. So it's kind of fun that way. Yeah. But look where we are. I know. I'm so so it's happy. It's kind of crazy. Back. It's hot. It is hot. Do we have the air on? I'm sweating. <laughs> is the air on? The air is on. Check the air. Ugh. So wait. You know we're back. We're lucky to be here. Everybody's doing well. And we have a great night tonight. Yeah, I'm really excited. We've got Tammy Smith coming on. All right. The, and, tam- the, the queen from the West Coast. Yep, so we get a little bit of California. And then we've got Sinead Maynard. Don't say help. I just call her Sinead. Just Sinead. I call her the Chanel model coming out of the mud at Rocking Horse. That was, yeah, it was pretty epic. Like that. Yeah, that was yeah. a while ago, but it's that's okay. It's pretty awesome. In my photo. mind, it's pretty cool. And then, of course, world famous show jumping course designer Chris Barnard. Yeah, who he's is here. wicked good at push ups. And he's really good. He got a good haircut. Yeah, I tried to match him. Tonight. I got a haircut. You got a haircut. We all got haircuts. This was actually, I was just trying to trim my sideburns. And then. By yourself? Yeah. Can't have Jen help you. I was actually, I was actually in the bathroom, butt nude. Oh, great! Trying to trim my sideburns, mm-hmm. and it just kept going. It was horrible. It actually looks better than you did the other day. So that's because it's good. grown out a bit. Yeah, thank you. Well, with with those guests and what's going on, you know, a lot's happening in the world. The biggest news, I think, for all of us, is that we might be able to start horse showing. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. USEF has some new guidelines for that. Right. And you being the information person that you are, we're our official reporter on scene for the what webcast thing, and you know all about it. So tell us all about it. I do. So I don't really know all about it. I do know I went to the webinar with, with Max and, and Rob and, and Jenny Autry, and they presented what to expect, and they have an action plan actually on the USEF, USEA website. Uh, That action plan kind of goes through competitors, um, organizers. I I think one of the main things uh, is, and a lot of people kind of started getting upset, is that you have to have, will you grab that um, cover up? You have to have like a mask right? when not mounted, right? And is that everybody at the horse show? Everybody not mounted, yeah. I mean, because originally I thought I'd heard it was like horse show employees. Employees, but it's everybody. If, I, if, if you're, you're walking not the course, if you're coaching somebody, correct. Okay. If if you if you like, let's say you're at your barn and you're around your own people, right? This is my interpretation. You don't need to be wearing your mask because you're already in your group, right? Right. But if you're going off of there into areas within six feet that you could be in contact with somebody that um, you haven't been normally with, you have to be like wearing your mask. So we went and got these, which are really cool, and you just pull them up, you know? That's bang, bang. We need some official John and Rick show ones. Well, I think we can do that, but see, they're, they're Fisher, they're, Joel, they're Fisherman things. Some buffs. Yeah, they're AFCTOs, buffs, skaters. AFCO, yeah. Yeah. That's right. So AFCO. you can do a lot with them. You can be, you know, you can become like a poor Ohms girl. <laughs> or, you know, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> All right. (laughs) So So where I think it's going to be tricky is what about when you're walking cross country? Like especially down here in the south in August when we're at an event, it is going to be hard to walk around cross country. Look, I think the main thing is you're going to have this on and you're going to protect yourself from the sun. So let's go with the benefits of no sun sun irritation. Look at you. Go with the fact that, you know, you can have it on. If you're going to get close to somebody, then pull the baby up and go, hey, how's it going? And then you can pull it back down. You know, for some of us, like myself, it might be an improvement if you cover as much of it up as you can. Yeah, and you can always do the whole head because you can go in the back and you can come. You know, there's all kinds of ways you can do it. It's a good look. Well, you know, I can't really. Briggs has got it all down. But, yeah. I, you know, I like there's it. There's different ways. Anyway, with that being said, I think there's other uh, parameters going involved. And the organizers are going to have ways of not having contact 
Um, you know, and I think it can be done. We just got to have a positive attitude. Look, we're, we're going to be able to show. Right. No, absolutely. We'll just get so, it done. We'll let's get it do done. it. Um, I mean, and Chris can walk around and do fence you know, his design and just be masked up and just don't use anybody to help him. You don't have to have a mask on. Oh, there you go. There you go. Um, and so then from there, I wanted to actually just touch base a little bit on the frangible fence fundraiser, which you know about. Yeah. So I made a promise that if we could get to the next $50,000 mark, I think this was my idea. Yeah. This probably was your idea. Um, by the time that the, or before the time that the first horse leaves cross country, I will get a rib tattoo right here that says horribly hashtag frangible now. And I'll get it big enough and I'll cry and complain and I'll probably get... I would say hashtag I am frangible. I am frangible if you punch me right here. And I'll, you know, maybe I'll get Joel to come out and video it so he can make fun of me. I like it. I like that. Um, We'll make a thing out of it. But we got to get there. I think we're like still like 20 grand short. So we got to get this done. So if you do that for that amount and the next next 50,000 you said... So it's going to be, we got to get to 250 and then we'll be at 300 because it's matching. So at 300, you're going to get the tattoo. Well, so... No. Right now we're at like 220 something. When we get to 250, I'll get the tattoo. When we get to 300, I'll get a tattoo. Well, that's going to happen immediately because when we get oh. to 250, we get a matching grant to 300. So we'll get the tattoo together. We heard it here, everybody. <laughs> Rick and I are getting tattoos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'll do 350. Uh, okay. Okay. Deal. But I'm, you're still getting a tattoo when I get one. No, I'm sweating. Again. <laughs> um, so... That's going on, and then to help us get there, we actually have, starting today, there is a, um, what am I searching for here? Silent auction mm-hmm. going on, or an online auction. Did good, um, it was really silent there for That a was second. super silent, that was the auction, it happened. Um, no, so there's an auction going on today, online, it starts, and I think it's on for a week or so. Okay. Anyway, we'll have it on the John is and Rick Show stuff? Facebook page, and it's some really good stuff. Right. Um, there is Doses of Summit, who's one of our big sponsors. So, um, and Summit works, by the way, everybody. Uh, I've been using it on, on Co- my one I wonder now, Cody. Right. And he's been, been So it's doing been working well for you. Yeah, he awesome. even helps him see. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> um, and so <laughs> I've got, uh, we, well, Jamie McAllister actually put this all together. And so she's got doses of Summit. There's training sessions or um, training. Like I actually have a week of training at my farm. There's lessons from different professionals throughout the country. Um, wow. I'm pretty sure CrossFit Antics is going to do a three-month membership. That's amazing. Um, so the week, at, the week at your farm, do we get to access the pool and the... the, the yeah, it's all inclusive and, and I'll, alcohol I'll and give and... haircuts too. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm going to sign up for that. So there you go. Um, so there's that. And then one other thing that I did that was pretty fun is the other day I went in and I donated blood. Yeah, I was on the phone with you. Yeah, you were. And you said, you should video that. So my idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rick is the brains behind the operation. I'm not sure what I am, but I'm here. I'm present. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> You're right. Sometimes I'm not even here. Um, so I went out there. I shot a little video of my experience, and um, I thought we'd probably play it for you guys Oh, now. my gosh. Let's watch it because, you know, I'm really proud of you, and, and everybody out there should give blood if you can. Yeah. Um, and go and give because we need it no matter what. And let's watch this because you were brave, you did a good job, and you got something and they get to see it. Yeah, and I didn't even cry on film, kind of. Hey guys, so I am here at Life South Community Blood Centers getting ready to donate blood. Um, I know with the COVID thing going on and all the quarantine that we're definitely low, at least here in Florida. So uh, I've been trying to come every two weeks and I would encourage you guys to do it as well. It's kind of a nice thing to do even um you know taking away the having to donate thing i get away to spend a couple hours uh, because i do platelets and plasma so that usually takes um i don't know an hour hour and a half um doesn't hurt and i get to watch some tv they got little tv monitors there and they give you snacks and the whole deal so i kind of look forward to it as a little bit of a break in my day um and i would encourage all of you to do the same so i'm gonna hop in there um i'll try to sneak a little video and then um I'll talk to you in a few minutes. All right, guys. So that is done. Super easy. Caught up on um, YouTube and Facebook and even watched a little bit of Netflix in there, caught up on um, season two of Dead to Me, which is 
a really good show on Netflix. I highly recommend it. And um, even super exciting. Oops, sorry. I got a box of Girl Scout cookies. I opted for the Samoas. Where is it here? There, there, yeah. Gotta love the Samoas. And uh, I can't say that that's gonna be a regular thing every time that you donate blood, but it was a nice little extra today. There's the evidence. It took 43 minutes today. It was very fast and easy and painless. So other than one little itty bitty prick from a needle, it was no problem at all. And um, I got to drink a Pepsi. And like I said, I got my Girl Scout cookies. So if you wanna do something to help out through this pandemic or even really regardless of the pandemic, just help out a little bit. It uh, is probably the easiest, laziest way to help out people. And you just get to sit in a big comfy chair and um, hang out, which is always kind of nice. So I'm going to go enjoy my Girl Scout cookies. Talk to you guys later. All right. So I loved the Girl Scout cookies. I have to admit, I got the box and I was like, oh, Caden is going to love these. And then somehow <laughs> you ate them from the drive from the blood donation site to home, which is only like 15 minutes, they were all gone. So were you in your Corvette? Yeah. And were you, was your hair blowing out and your, your cookies going in your well, mouth? Well, I had this like, haircut then, so... It doesn't matter. Hair's I'm not still sure blowing. Did, but yeah, Let's go with it. Was, it. Yeah. Did you have a, like a, a Monaco scarf on or something? I looked awesome. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was fun. That's but awesome. Everybody, you should go and do it. It's super easy. And um, like I said, I got caught up on Dead to Me, which actually now I'm finished with. And it was a great show. And um, yeah, had a good time. Look, look, I'm just happy to be in your presence. It's kind of giddy and fun and I, I like it. So, all right. Awesome. I feel honored. I'm not sure what that's all about. <laughs> well, we're, we're going to have Tammy coming up next. Is that right? Yep. So we've got uh, Tammy Smith coming up here. We got her um, all, all set to go. So we'll be Great. right back with Tammy. Sweet Dixie South is an equestrian facility built for the lifestyle of the vendors of all levels. Whether you are coming to Ocala for the entire season, a week, a month, or a year, this beautiful 160-acre farm a place to settle in and enjoy your time with horses. They offer a full cross-country course with two water features, banks, ditches, an amazing footing to gallop, a spectacular all-weather footing ring, large grass jumping fields, and dressage rings. Located in the rolling hills of North Marion County in Reddick, Florida, Sweet Dixie South has 100 stalls and numerous paddocks, apartments, a line of camper hookups, washer and dryer amenities, as well as common areas to complete your experience during your stay. Under the ownership of Mike Campbell and the management of Can Do Joe Adams at Top Rail Tack, Sweet Dixie South has transformed into a premier eventing training facility in Florida. Go to www.sweetdixiesouth.com for more information. Jump for Joy USA has what you need for your private farm or recognized competition. Our jumps are no maintenance, easy to move, and affordable. No scraping or painting necessary. We offer jump stands, wings, fillers, water trays, and more. Poles are wood-filled and available in four weights and lengths. And we now offer octagonal poles. Our cross-country portables and brush jumps are extremely useful and have been used for training by the British eventing team since 1990. Easy to move from the arena to the field and no tractor required, so you can change your setup often. We ship coast-to-coast -coast in the USA and Canada. Visit our website, jumpforjoyusa.com. The equestrian life has big highs, heartbreaking lows, and so many moments of self-doubt. From CCI 5 Star to Starter, every rider needs a support system and a cheering section. A care package filled with equestrian goodies can be the perfect way to celebrate, congratulate, or commiserate. Let Present Pony do the work so you don't have to miss an opportunity to express your love and support. All right, welcome back to the John and Rick Show, the voice of the eventing radio show brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros. And we are very excited because we are joined by Tammy Smith, our good friend and um, general superstar in eventing. So Tammy was a member of the Pan American Games gold medal team last year. She also won the 2015 Fair Hill CCI four-star long. Um, and has just been a mainstay on the eventing circuit, not just on the East Coast, but worldwide. Um, has competed at events like Kentucky numerous times and um, 
I know you've been to Bookalo and a lot of other cool places over in England. So, uh, Tammy, thanks for joining us. Yeah, Tammy, yeah, thanks for thank being with us. Thanks for having me. So, John, lead us off. Let's talk some more. Uh, what kind of questions do we need to ask this really cool girl from the West Coast? Well, I think really the first thing that comes to mind for me, Tammy, is obviously you're a big star in eventing in North America, and you have at some point in your life made the choice that you were going to stay out in California and keep your business going there. And there's got to be obviously some challenges and some advantages to being out on the West Coast competing on a sport that in North America really is dominated on the East Coast. So um, I just wondered if you could just talk about sort of maybe why you have chosen to stay in California. Obviously, it's home. Um, and then maybe what some of those challenges are with that that um, you have to deal with. Um, it was never really a choice, actually. I never even considered moving away from the West Coast. Um, yeah, it's always been home. I lived here. I've actually been kind of where I grew up and was raised and um, my family all moved away. Maybe a bad sign, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but uh, sort of like that. Cat. Anyway, <laughs> kind of like that cat. Um, anyway, I obviously my career is very different than a lot of people's. Like I, I went, I went to college and had like a corporate job and worked and did that until I was 27 uh, when then I had my son and then I stayed home and decided with the encouragement of my husband to become a professional rider, which I uh, was never expecting or wanting to be a professional rider. So he, you know, him and I had already established a family and Dave had a long, uh, standing, really great career as a police officer in his, in his work. And so there was never any even thought process of moving east and so um but then also i then as i kind of you know i was going up the links and you know traveling and doing all that stuff i i felt like i was kind of the the voice a little bit like amy tryon was for the west coast uh and that we can do it from here and so uh i just i can't even imagine ever living anywhere else. I have lived all throughout the country and uh, yeah, it does have a little bit of its challenges, but not, I don't think, not like what I think a lot of people think. So um, I think I'm in the best place actually. Right, right. And so with that, obviously you have to make some big plans. Like when you want to compete at uh, Kentucky, I guess maybe Kentucky, you guys have a pretty good run up to it, but I know when you have to compete, um, like at Fair Hill, it seems like you have to come out and sort of make a trip out of it, hit a couple events and then get to the, the big event, get to Fair Hill or get to, I guess, Maryland now we should call it. Um, and so logistically that's got to take a lot of effort on, on your part and on your team's part. I think the way I've done it throughout my career, because I started much later than a lot of people do. So I was lacking a lot of experience. So I needed to kind of, you know, basically do it with, you know, hit a bird with two, you know, what is it? One, one, kill a bird, kill one bird with two kill stones. Kill a bird yeah. with two stones. No, you two know, birds, like two birds with one stone. Two birds with that. one stone. That's yeah, it. there we go. We're really smart. <laughs> oh gosh, y'all are just on top <laughs> of it. <laughs> why I, why I. <laughs> Those eggs worked well for both of you. Yes, yes. I'm, uh, it's early. For, I'm not an early person. So even yeah, though no, eight o'clock is up. like normal. Yeah, I do not like waking up in the morning. Um, but. <laughs> you don't like, I, you don't have to do that. You, I think that it's important to do that when you lack experience. But now like I went straight to Kentucky and competed. Um, I went straight to Buccalo and competed um, and came straight home. And so when you're, when you are lacking experience, you most definitely need to go East and compete against all the, you know, best in our sport in North America and, measure yourself up against, uh, everybody. And 
you know, I'll never forget my first trip to Fairhill and being in the show jump warm up. And I'd never actually ridden in a ring with somebody who had a pink coat. And I was the only one with a Navy coat. It was, it was very intimidating. Um, and so it's, you know, and that's just something that you have to kind of get over mentally from a rider standpoint, but you, we are in a place now on the West coast where we can prepare here. We have fantastic events that we can lead up to big competitions. And in fact, I think I've had my best results when I've stayed home and prepared. Right. And so with that, I think, you know, you touched on something earlier, which was, you know, it seems to me, Amy Tryon was sort of not the first person from the West coast by a long stretch. I know there were lots of, lots of people before that, yeah, Jill Walton. Um, but Amy was in my generation, the first big name person who came out here. And I remember she came out and I remember thinking, I think she was at Radnor the first time. Um, and I thought, you know, who is this girl? Like I've never seen her before. And she just rides like a demon out there. And so you, um, in my opinion, have sort of taken that torch of like badass cross country rider out there from the West coast going out and getting it done. And I think that naturally has to inspire a lot of kids from the West coast to feel like they can do it too. And, you know, I know you say you never had a choice. It was, that's where you live. That's who you are. You're a California girl for sure. Um, but you do inspire a lot of kids to go and sort of pursue their dreams and feel like, you know, being on the West coast, isn't going to limit them. Um, and, and that's pretty cool. And I just, you know, wonder if you have any advice for that, you know, 15, 16 year old kid who's in California and feeling like, you know, okay, maybe I can event at Galway Downs every once in a while or go to this event on the West Coast or that event. Um, but if I really want to do it, can I do it from here? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm living proof that I've been doing it from here. So I've never been, I've never had the luxury of being able to leave because I had a family. Um, so where a lot of people, I might have chosen that differently. I might have said, had I not been married and had kids, I might have said, yeah, I need to go east. In fact, a lot of my mentors had encouraged me to do so. Um, so I might have listened to them. But luckily, my family was predominantly, you know, more important in uh, besides Dave would have never left California. So <laughs> and so if anybody's met Dave, they know I hit the jackpot. So I couldn't have left Dave. Um, but, uh, I just, I, I, I did go, I have gone East and I've stayed, you know, months at a time. And I've even gone to the, to the UK and stayed three and a half months there. And I just know, like, it's easy for everybody to say, gosh, it's so hard to live on the West coast. But if you have never lived here, like you, life is really easy here. Yeah, I, I look, I came out a few years ago to compete a horse at Galway in November. And I mean, it is it actually was a very nice event, like by itself. It was a I fun loaned event. you my air vest. Yeah, that's right. You saved me because my he horse reared over those, on me. He, he forgets those all the time. Tammy. Yeah. yeah, my horse, Rick, as I was going down to the start box, flipped over on me. What? Yeah, flipped yeah. over on me, blew my air vest up, fell on top of me. I got picked up by. Richard Pick and David O'Connor and Leslie Law. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm next out of the box. And thank God Tammy is an awesome person because she ran down to me with her air vest, gave it to me, said, good luck. Don't fall in my vest. <laughs> <laughs> was that Z? Uh, that was a horse called Kill Dalton Cooley, who was a great uh, horse, yeah. but really tricky. And getting across the racetrack well, blew his mind. Hey. Thank God yeah. for Tammy loaning you that. And and to your point, John, I think about, I think we can point to somebody uh, in the category that you were talking about. Um, I think Mia Farley left California when she was 16 uh, and she took the route of working with the O'Connors. So there, and she's still over on the East Coast at this point. So, you know, Tammy, I hear, heard her story and she was older and had <laughs> family and, you know, sometimes the younger kids, sometimes if they can find the right match, can head over. But now that they have all these great West coast riders, they don't need to leave. Yeah, exactly. I think, um, let's get into that a little bit more, Tammy. We're just going to take a quick break and then we'll be back. I want to talk about that. And then I want to talk about fair Hill and the Pan Ams. Be right back. 
special thanks to our contributing sponsor, Black Horse Farm, fox hunting and eventing. Located in Area 4, Black Horse Farm and the Mossback Hounds in Elizabeth, Illinois, welcome active USEA eventers to come join them for an introductory fox hunt free of charge. Ride with Master of the Hounds, Tony Leahy, and the Mossback Hounds over some of the finest hunt territory in the entire country. For further details, visit Black Horse Farm on Facebook to arrange for a ride sponsor. ERA of North America is the voice of the rider. To simulate and leverage the collective voice of North American riders, equine professionals, and owners, ERA of North America works to improve the overall safety, welfare, visibility, and growth of the sport. Be sure to go to www.eraofna.com and jump in. You can compare, you can contrast, but in the end, there's only one ultra-premium horse feed. Pro Elite Horse Feed. Its nutrition lock formulas ensure quality. Its advanced amino acid profiles maximize performance. Its regulated starch and sugar levels mean confident calorie sourcings, and its superior digestibility leads to an overall healthier horse. When it comes to feeding your champion horse, there is no competition. There's Pro Elite Horse Feed. For more information, visit www.proelitehorsefeed.com. Welcome back to the John and Rick Show, the voice of the Eventing Radio Show and sponsored by Horse Trailer Pros. We're coming back with the great Tammy Smith out there on the West Coast. Thanks so much for being with us. Um, John, I think we're going to have her lead off with talking about a really cool horse she had that she won the 2015 four-star. Has. 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 Still has. Has. Sorry. That was not had at the time and still has right now. Uh, <laughs> tell us about that cool black dragon that you have. Black Stallion. Um, my bond. Um, yeah, he is the most magical and most heartbreaking horse uh, that I've ever had. Um, but he's going strong now. And um, it was a little bit of a fairy tale, actually. Uh, I'll never forget Alex uh, Ahern, who was competing and riding him. She rode him at Fair Hill on the two star, now the three star long um the year before and we walked the course and it was raining so so much rain and mud you know you couldn't see the first fence because it was just covered with mud and uh she said what if he hangs a leg and I'm like Al like this horse will never hang a leg he will never hang a leg but like out of all the horses in the world this is that will never hang a leg and he hung a leg at the last water uh, and uh, she managed to just like spider monkey stay on and make a circle. And she had some trouble, but she finished. And I think that scared her. You know, she sat me down and was like, I don't know if I want to do this. And anyway, fast forward to net. Then the next year after she made the U25s and she got a fun, I don't remember what grant it was, but it was a really cool grant. And just promising kids with this great horse. And she said, uh, I really want you to start taking over the ride on my bomb. And I, I was like, I don't think you realize what you're saying to me right now. Um, and we were sitting at dinner and she's like, no, that's, you know, like that horse is, I know how great that horse is and I'll never be able to take him to where he needs to go. And you need a good horse. And, um, anyway, fast forward, then that whole year was just like a fairy tale. It was, one win after it, the other. Um, in hindsight, I I learned a lot because I ran him way too much, and nobody grabbed me by my throat and said, "What the hell are you doing? <laughs> well, why are you going and going and going?" Um, in fact, it was the opposite. It was you have to go there and you have to win that, and then you have to come here and you have to win that, and then once you win all these events, then we'll we'll take you to Rio next year. So I did it and he won and then he was limping at the end of the year and uh, it was so heartbreaking, but, um, but a lesson that, you know, you, you, what is it? What's, what's it's the, the experience the you thing? get after you get it. Yeah. yeah. There you We're go. really good. We're really good at sayings. <laughs> I know. I know it in my head. I just can't repeat it. Um, yeah, but it was so it was so cool to see because you're right. You had such a great year. You came out and I mean it was 2015 and you just dominated everybody. And it was, I mean, for me watching, it was so obvious that you 
you were going to go to the Olympics the next year. And then, like you were saying. Yeah, so he he didn't have a significant injury, actually. Um, it was kind of a weird, he must have had a, some sort of impact injury on the outside of his tendon. It's like it ricocheted up his tendon, which I've never had a horse have that kind of injury before. Um, but we knew how great he was and he was young. So we were super conservative. Yeah. Cause he was eight him. at the time. Um, right? Yeah. And, and, or nine, nine or whatever. Um, but we, we just were like, you know what? I, I just went, I almost, you know, the pendulum sw- swings both ways and I just went to the opposite end. I went from full throttle, like, like you know, nothing, everything's going to go right to, well, you know, and put him a little bit in a bubble. And we rehabbed him from that. And he just, <laughs> it was just like, it's almost like when you have that much success, you end up following it up with that much um, turmoil. <laughs> and and this sport is so difficult that way that yeah. Um, it was just one bad luck thing after another. He got some sort of like stomach infection and had to be in the hospital for, I don't know, two and a half months. And, um, then fell in the trailer. Heather had never, Heather Morris is my best friend. And she, we had went to a competition and I had ridden him at the competition. He'd come back and done the, the intermediate there. And she take she took him home in the trailer in her trailer, and he'd never been in her trailer. But I was staying to school with some other horses, and she t- takes him home, and he ends up falling down weird. She had these really big fans in the trailer, and he's a really spook- spooky horse. Anyway, he ends up like ripping his shipping boots off and ripping his hip off, and ending up like in a leg cast from slicing his leg practically off, and. That was a fun friend conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, <laughs> excuse me, uh, you're still best friends, which is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah so, but, so, so you went through all of this, Tammy, and then yeah. suddenly it was like a phoenix rising out of the ashes because you end up on the Pan American Games team in 2019. And, and I would like to input Tammy a little bit because I saw you on your comeback and I remember very clearly, I think it was Stable View. Um, you being pressured to run and you were like, I'm not running. Um, and I thought that was pretty cool. It might've been there, might've been somewhere else, but I, I overheard you really taking up with your horse and making sure that whatever you were going to do, it was going to be the right decision. I just remember that clearly. And I, and I respected you so much for that. That was very cool. Yeah. Thanks. It, it is something that you have to learn. I mean, you have to know what's right for your horses and even, you know, that your, your coach and your, and the selectors, they're only doing what and suggesting what is best for the team. So they, they have to produce results. And so, um, it's up to you and you're your horse's advocate and you have to just say, yes, that's right. Or no, that's wrong. And actually it was the flea first Royal horse that I did. Oh, that's right. That's right. Before, um, Buccalo and she hadn't ridden in she hadn't run since Rebecca farm and they, they all thought I was crazy, but I know that mare so well. I've had her since she was three and I know that she runs best when she doesn't run. And I actually ran my bomb and I'm you now did. the poster child for, for the, the flag. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. But you got I mean, it. <laughs> if you're gonna uh, you got it. You got it. That was good. Somehow. So, so Tammy, so you get selected for the Pan American games you were one of the favorites to win the entire thing. You had a good dressage. You were in position to win that competition. And then t- take us through that a little bit. I know that's kind of a hard conversation to have, but I know it's something that um, it happened. It's real life. And, you know, take us through the weekend, sort of what happened. Um, I felt very confident going in. Um, I, the horse, felt like a million bucks. He was sound. We did a cross country school very conservatively. Um, I think we all were very surprised by the course design. Um, it was, um, uh, very twisty and turny. And, you know, I think I also, um, underestimated the fact that I hadn't done a lot with him since his comeback. 
And so he was, he was, he was a bit green there. And John, actually, you and I were like shortlisted in 2011 for the Pan Ams and you were, I was an alternate and you were, you were named to the team. And I yep. just saw, I mean, I remember being at Morvin and you guys all trying on your, your team coats and getting fitted and getting to take them home. And, yep. and then they said, Tammy, you're going to Buclo. <clears throat> like we want you to go to Buclo and, you know, the rest of you are going to go. And Lynn Szymanski ended up sl- sliding into that spot and going down to Florida to train before Guadalajara. And I just remember being over at Buclo and, um, and then Twisted getting system, the announcement right? that no, it was actually Marte Moore. Oh, there you go. That was, that was, that was, that's a whole nother chapter. <laughs> no, but it's, it's a, it's a great point, Tammy. Like uh, you and I, like you said, we were talking about this and, you know, it's such a fine line. I had a, it's such a similar situation and they both, honestly, the end result sucks because you've got a gold medal sitting in your house that you probably don't really love to look at because it should be too. And I have a pink coat sitting in my closet that I don't really like to look at because I can't wear it. And it, it's that fine line of I probably overprepared my horse and broke it, and you probably didn't quite do enough with your horse and didn't win it. Yeah. And it's a tough yeah. one, and I I feel for you. I can I mean, it's it's tough, but you did go there, you did represent, and you did get a team gold medal, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. And just for all those listeners out there, because sometimes we don't have people that really understand what we're talking about, and so let's let's inform them <laughs> what a pink coat is because a lot of people. Uh, out there in the like of any radio show or s- some other people picking up, what is a pink coat and why do we want it so bad? <laughs> well, it's a team jacket. I mean, it's it's the color red, scarlet. Um, I think that it comes from back in what fox hunting military right. uh, days. Um, so it's very traditional and eventing uh, to get your pink coat, like not in all sports, but in eventing to get your pink coat is very coveted and it's just the ultimate honor to be able to uh, you know finally earn that jacket and I I remember getting it like right before we left um for the plane and just seeing it just like that's my jacket and then putting it on that show jumping day is just really um bittersweet because I was (laughs) I was not I was putting on a on a fake smile the rest of the weekend, I, you know, I thought you were, was, but, but that's thought part you of being on a so team. Tough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, that's, that's part of being on a team is you had to put on that fake smile and go out there and jump the clear round because your team might've needed it and, and get it done. And you did. And I mean, kudos to you. And, uh, you know, I think for me, you're an inspiration in perseverance. I've seen you get knocked down and, you know, not to like be lame with that, get knocked down and get up again, but you do every time you get back up and you don't let anybody ever see you cry and you knock off the dust. And then usually you punch somebody in the face (laughs) because that's that's what you do. And so we're running, we're running out of time. Have you ever seen me punch somebody in the face? No, I think it's just, and before you try to wind down this segment, I got to do this because we're soon going to have to be wearing these at horse shows when not mounted. So just be prepared. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but Tammy, so what are your plans for this? I know obviously right now nobody has plans, but what are your plans sort of for the end of this season and leading into next year with your horses? What do you want to do? We'll just touch on that briefly. Um, gosh, they're going so well. It's so frustrating. I'm right now we're full steam ahead until I think June 1st, we'll find out what's happening on the West coast with competitions because, uh, California is very closed. It's not like where you guys live, where you can still kind of go do your thing. We're, we're very closed down. So either I will, you know, we'll start opening up and we'll start preparing for Maryland, um, Fairhill and, um, potentially maybe the AECs, um, or I'll be coming East to torture you guys. It'll be fun. I'll make sure that I stay clear so we don't get punched in the face. Right. No, that's a good. good she thing. would never punch me in the face. Just you. No, <laughs> I would. I would never. I, you would never need a reason to be punched in the face, Rick. See? Okay. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I do. <laughs> um, well, listen, 
Tammy Smith, thanks for joining us. I really Yay. appreciate you getting up early. I know it's um, it's pretty early on the West Coast, so um, it looks like you're getting ready to go out and ride. I think I saw you had some britches on there. So have a great day. Enjoy your horses, and thanks so much for coming on the show. Big hug. All right, we'll be right back. The equestrian life has big highs, heartbreaking lows, and so many moments of self-doubt. From CCI 5 Star to Starter, every rider needs a support system and a cheering section. A care package filled with equestrian goodies can be the perfect way to celebrate, congratulate, or commiserate. Let Present Pony do the work so you don't have to miss an opportunity to express your love and support. Summit Joint Performance, the injectable joint supplement used by numerous international and Olympic riders, invites you to experience the winning Summit difference. Made of all natural ingredients, Summit increases mobility and comfort. Win your class with Summit Joint Performance. ERA of North America is the voice of the rider. To assimilate and leverage the collective voice of North American riders, equine professionals, and owners, ERA of North America works to improve the overall safety, welfare, visibility, and growth of the sport. Be sure to go to www.eraofna.com and jump in. Well, welcome back to the John and Rick Show the voice of the vending radio show and we're here at the great horse trailer post pro studios for the first time back since covid and guess who we have here so we're really excited because we have Sinead Maynard Sinead thanks for joining us I got it right it's just Sinead (laughs) it's Sinead so we're excited Sinead uh has gone on and won numerous titles and accolades at the top of the sport of eventing her achievements include a silver medal as part of the U.S. Nations Cup team in Bucalo in 2010 placing in the top 10 at the prestigious used-to-be Rolex Kentucky three-day event (laughs) at each of her three appearances there in 2011, 2014, 2016. This is a long list of accolades, people, so hang on. She was 15th at Burley in 2011, second when she went back in 2012, and I remember that vividly because it was this close. (laughs) She represented the U.S. on multiple teams in being named, including being named the first alternate at the 2012 Olympics in London, England, and also the reserve for the 2016 Olympics in Rio, also this close. (laughs) Uh, and she rode as an individual at the World Equestrian Games in Normandy, France in 2014. Bam. So there you go. We're excited to have you. 27 years later, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> I had to pair. She sent me. I'm going to tell you guys. She sent me a bio. It was four pages long. <laughs> I didn't do it. Somebody else did that for me. And I had to pair it down to that. So you're welcome. <laughs> We love having you here. I love being here. I was like, I feel so awkward socializing. I don't know what to do. I know. It's kind of weird. We're used to having (laughs) your other two babies with you. I know. I know. know, Who's babysitting Tick? (laughs) (laughs) When I left, he had one beer and he was painting our new house. And I just was like, I'm out. Awesome. Cool news. He had actually written his name on the wall. Like, that's what he was doing. He was like, you got to come see what I did. And I was like. That's, that's our living room. <laughs> that is a very true See? story. So you have a new house. Well, we have been, since we bought our farm, we've been trying to get into the upstairs apartment. Right. There was never an apartment. There was a hayloft. So we've been slowly renovating. And then um, now we've got walls up. And, yeah, we've been laying floor. I have, like, a torn muscle in my back. I'm laying floor. and That's painting. not getting you out of the push-up challenge. Not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd just put that in there. But, the push-up um, challenge. Yeah, that is circulating. Yeah. So. so that's exciting, though, huh? Mm-hmm. So right now you live off property just down mm-hmm. the road. Yep. Mm-hmm. At another farm. Mm-hmm. And so this will put you on property? We will all be, yeah, there's nothing. I mean, we love, um, you know, it was a huge thing. I think, as we all know, like, we spend a lot of our careers renting, renting, and renting. But once you actually f- kind of buy something, and, and what we have is not anything fancy or special, but it's ours, and it's special because that of that. That is special. Yeah, yeah so we've been building, you know, pa- teach a clinic, build a paddock, you know, <laughs> like that sort of thing. And, um, yeah, this year we're finally ready to try and get over there. Because, That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited, but it's been a pretty intimidating process. But now I feel really, like, empowered. Like, I feel like I could... It's going to yeah. happen. It's like you're an adult. I'm like an adult. Yeah, yeah. pretty awesome. I can, I can put the floor down. 
So do you have things you want to talk to her about? Because I have something I want to talk to her about. <laughs> well, I do. Do you want to, do you want to go first or should I? Should we, should we do I said nothing rock, was off limits. paper, scissors? All right, rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> one, two, three. Oh, that's dynamite. a dynamite. One, two, three, throw. Is this All right, ready? Go. Let's do that. Go. One, two, three. No, you did it early again. One, one two, two, three. three. No, Rick. <laughs> shoot. <laughs> okay. One, <laughs> two, three, shoot. Uh, okay, you go first. All right. All that. <laughs> all that to talk about... So great. Rocking horse. I oh remember it very well. <laughs> we are I'm talking. Sorry. We are all kind of playing around. There was a I hold think on. Paper is starting to trump scissors, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> there was a hold on course, right? And yeah. we were all kind of it was kind of long. Nothing serious at that hold. Oh, that but, jump judge. What was her name? She got lost. Oh, that's right. <laughs> she got lost. So we we're all kind of batting around fun things. And then Sinead goes, I just want to go get this done. Well, I got it done. <laughs> Tell us what happened. Throw that to the ground. <laughs> tell us what happened there. Because the picture lives on forever. And I got to tell everybody, this woman cannot take a bad picture. I know. It's amazing. It's Actually, you know matter. what I've noticed about Shane? What the hell's going on? The worse the situation, the better you <laughs> look. She comes out. So tell us I what happened. That. I that. Yeah, I'm very good at, um, anyway. Coming out of. <laughs> yeah, I was just, I needed yeah, to good job. that sentence. Thank you. I'm learning. I'm growing up. Um, yeah, I just completely wiped out in the water. I, it was the fourth uh, time I had been out actually on that preliminary course and this beautiful horse and um, he was just rocking and rolling and just m lost his footing and went down in the water and the last thing I remember was, well it wasn't last thing, I thought he was going to come up. Like I, he, you know, when you get the feeling like, right. oh, okay, You're okay, gonna okay, go okay. Down. we're good, we're good. And then I was like, oh no, uh, and I just went flying off to the side and so what? Exploded. What made you crawl out? I was underwater. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, the, the eventually you survive. Eventually you want to breathe. <laughs> I was like, I'm underwater. And then I literally was like, I'm still underwater. And so the first picture was me just gasping for air and checking to see if, like, my heart was there. <laughs> and, um, and I love that. Because there have been multiple times that I've gone back to photographers to, say, to try and figure out what's gone wrong. And they stopped taking the pictures. And I was like, what is wrong with you? Keep shooting. Right. And, um... But I say it more plate. And uh, this <laughs> photographer did not stop. Yeah. Uh -uh. And so it was like an awesome, yeah, set That's of That's like bathroom wall material. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty epic. So with that, now let's go to a good accolade. Moving on well, from there. That was a good picture. It was good pictures. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. You can't be it's trusted. Like 2012. Yeah, I, I actually, I did say that to the photographers. I said, you know what? Those pictures were worth the fall. Like, I'd do it again. I <laughs> tell you. Do you have those posted up in your house? I don't yet, but I will. I have a whole, like, kind of album of pictures. Amazing. So, go. so you've got a really good string of horses. Um, you know, good transition. You've got Cuddy, Eight. right? Eight on that transition. Cuddy Sark. Cuddy Sark. Cuddy Sark. He has a great horse, and he has mm -hmm. some nice ones coming up behind him. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're all dealing with this COVID mm -hmm. thing, and we don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, but what, if everything goes forward as we hope, mm -hmm. and we start eventing here soon, sort of what are your plans? What do you intend to do, especially with, with Cuddy? Um, yeah, I'm going to go event, man. Um, well, I'm, yeah, I'm really excited. I think it's been... It's been, like, it's been an interesting time, I think, for all of us, and it's been a, a good... Well, half halt, right? To right. sit down, reevaluate, and kind of say, what are my goals? What are my um, expectations for the season, for the year, for my life? You know, not to get too deep. We got like eight minutes. But, um, you know, I think what I really decided was um, I wanted to make sure that the body of work that I'm producing is as good as it can be. And I've got some lovely horses, and I, instead of being so caught up, which we've kind of been trained to do since we were quite young, like we're going to this three day, that three day, this three day, this, you know. To, to build my season upon where the horse is at. And so um, all of my horses actually were aimed at fall three days anyway um, because they were all in kind of tran transitional phases in their, in their work. So um, Cuddy will come out and, and hopefully get back going at the advanced level, and hopefully there'll be um, a later fall three day for him to go to. And I've got a couple of nice young ones that will be stepping up the, to the two and three star level if they're ready. but. Um, I'm not really interested at this stage of my career in, in um, being an also ran. Right. So I'd rather, and I'm just so fortunate. I've got just the best uh, team of people around me and owners and supporters. And I think we've all learned that as we've definitely gotten through our career that your team, your people need to be like-minded. And I think um, my, the people that are around me are on that same page. So if I were to say, look, we're not three daying this fall, like I need another bit of time to get this to a certain point. They'd be on board. So. Right. Having that good team well, behind you is so important. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah, knowing the horses, knowing where you want to go, know, know, the, know the safety for mm-hmm. what you want to do, mm-hmm. and knowing that they're not prepared, you need to wait. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's the premise and the message we're sending forward throughout the whole sport. Not Absolutely. only at, at the advanced level like you are, but also from beginning novice all the way up to, yeah. to where we are. Well, it's a crazy thing to me, like now that I'm a little bit older, like it is a, a crazy thing, like what like like the horses I've taken levels knowing I should not have been taking the right level, you know, and still having a talented horse and and good training sure. and a good skill set still in my head going, uh, but might be a little early. Yeah, like maybe so. And then I um, I have a really wonderful eight year old horse called Staccato Bronx that mm, has, yeah, I've had since nice she was a, a four year old, and he's owned by the most amazing family, the Callanan family, and they've never once pushed me with him, and he's just been slow to develop. He's kind of a. a, a Tough Irish horse, sort but in like the best Trump. way. Yeah. Slow to develop. I'm still working <laughs> still on growing. developing. Yeah, but it's been a it's been so wonderful with him because he you know, is probably, if you look at where he should be as a competition horse, he's probably a year, year and a half behind at the level he should be at. But I, as an eight-year-old now, I, I enjoy him so much and he's going preliminary. Like he's done two, like two and a half seasons of preliminary, but I think he's going to be solid. Well, and at the yeah. end, when you're at the five star, I don't think anybody cares if the horse is nine or 15, yeah. you're at the five star. Yeah. And yeah, sure. If it's nine, maybe you get a couple more cracks yeah. at it, but not that yours is going to be 15. Yeah, I didn't yeah. mean that, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? I'm you just move up to intermediate when he's 15. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that's right. And, and yeah. good for you to just, you know, again, it comes with maturity, right? Right. You start to learn over the years, like this, I have to do right by the horses yeah. and not that you didn't know that before, but you you that just out even you know you just don't quite know and i think that's come back again from a lot of the people that own these horses if I, and i've said i said look i don't think this horse is ready to go but if you need to sell or if you need to do this i'm okay i just want it not to be a stress for you and i just want this horse to be great and you know every single conversation it sounds to me like and mm-hmm. we've got to we got to go here pretty quick but it mm-hmm. sounds to me like perhaps tick Maynard, your <laughs> husband, has had some influence over the horsemanship <laughs> side of it, being yeah. the great horseman that he is. It's got to yeah. be pretty cool. Yeah. It's a great team. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty Great lucky. having you. Great being here. Yeah. Thanks so much Air for five. coming in. And, uh, Air 5. <laughs> Air 5. Hang out. And uh, cool. we've got Chris Barnard coming up, so you can hang out for that. Yeah. And then we're all going to do push-ups, push-ups at the end. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm going to video that. All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> Jump for Joy USA has what you need for your private farm or recognized competition. Our jumps are no maintenance, easy to move, and affordable. No scraping or painting necessary. We offer jump stands, wings, fillers, water trays, and more. Poles are wood-filled and available in four weights and lengths. And we now offer octagonal poles. Our cross-country portables and brush jumps are extremely useful and have been used for training by the British eventing team since 1990. Easy to move from the arena to the field and no tractor required, so you can change your setup often. We ship coast-to-coast in the USA and Canada. Visit our website, jumpforjoyusa.com. You can compare, you can contrast, but in the end, there's only one ultra-premium horse feed, Pro Elite Horse Feed. Its nutrition lock formulas ensure quality. Its advanced amino acid profiles maximize performance. Its regulated starch and sugar levels mean confident calorie sourcings, and its superior digestibility leads to an overall healthier horse. When it comes to feeding your champion horse, there is no competition. There's Pro Elite Horse Feed. For more information, visit www.proelitehorsefeed.com. Sweet Dixie South is an equestrian facility built for the lifestyle of the vendors of all levels. Whether you are coming to Ocala for the entire season, a week, a month, or a year, this beautiful 160-acre farm is the place to settle in and enjoy your time with horses. They offer a full cross-country course with two water features, banks, ditches, an amazing footing to gallop, a spectacular all-weather footing ring, large grass jumping fields, and dressage rings. Located in the rolling hills of North Marion County in Reddick, Florida, Sweet Dixie South has 100 stalls and numerous paddocks, apartments, a line of camper hookups, washer and dryer amenities, as well as common areas to complete your experience during your stay. Under the ownership of Mike Campbell and the management of Can Do Joe Adams at Top Rail Tack, Sweet Dixie South has transformed into a premier eventing training facility in Florida. Go to www.sweetdixiesouth.com for more information. Welcome back to the John and Rick Show, the voice of the eventing radio show, and we're at the studios of our presenting sponsor, Horse Trailers Pros, and we're here with the great 
Yeah, so we're excited. We've got Chris Barnard, the Hello. great course designer. So Chris is a USEF large R show jumping course designer, and he designs for numerous, numerous, that's a big word, FEI events, including the event at Rebecca Farm, the CCI four star, the Fork CCI, Morven Park CCI, Red Hills CCI, and we've got Great Meadow in there. Basically everywhere that there is a CCI four star in this country, I always Chris see Barnard Chris. is there. Always. Um, so he's been all over the world. Chris is actually originally from England and now lives here in Ocala, Florida, and we are super excited to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. It's With your wonderful here. wife. Girlfriend. Girlfriend. Oh, but I she's shouldn't correct it. Yeah. yeah, don't correct that. You know what? <laughs> yeah, Justine, whatever. Yeah. Whatever you want to be, Justine. Justine, Justine Dutton. Five minutes, two, five seconds in, I got myself in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the show. Thank We're you. excited thank about you. having you here. And uh, how's it been going since all this COVID's been going on? Good. I mean, we've stayed home. Yeah. You know, like Justine and I, we are very lucky to have the farm and we've stayed down for three years now. So um, we stay home, go to the grocery store, go to the feed store for the horses, and that's about it. But, and it, um, then the cool thing that you have started back since we could is your um, show jump, um, your jumper shows at yeah, your farm we, where you let people like schedule time frames come out yeah. and we get to enjoy your, your design. And that's the idea. I think, you know, for us going forward through this summer, I think that's the way we'll run it. I mean, everybody's free to do whatever they want, right. but I think it just, for us, it's, it's a way to just sort of keep it safe. Right. And so just to interrupt for a second, yep. for those who don't know, so that's a good, good segue. Good. Chris, to describe it. Uh, yeah. So Chris and Justine have a farm here in Ocala and as soon as the restrictions in Florida were lifted, they scheduled a competition where Chris set up a sh uh, show jumping course, and then you, as a farm, <clears throat> put in an entry to say you want to come to the event or the horse show, and then they give you a time slot based on the number of horses you have. So I actually went there. It was a great time. Um, I still have to send you the invoice for Caden's <laughs> drone footage. As you do. Um, but it was, it, was, it was great. We went there. You had, we had six horses. We had an hour and a half to jump them and went in. Nobody else from any other farms are around. You, there's no contact with anybody. And you go in and you jump your horses and then That's you get awesome. out of there yeah. before the next horse shows up. Yeah. And we had, I mean, I think we had, over, we did over two days and we had, I think, 35 or 38 horses come, which is, which is plenty. You know, for us, it's not the amount of horses that come. It's just having the, the facility and the course there for people that right. want to come out and, and do it in a safe way. And that's, I think that's the way we'll do it through the summer and then see what happens around and, and do that. Well, and it's, it's, like you said, 35 horses compared to what you had done sure. is nothing. Right. But – it keeps things moving, right? It keeps you a little bit of money coming in, and I think that's the secret for all of us is, look. Well, it makes us, like, enjoy right. getting out. Well, and so not, we only enjoy, not only enjoy being out, but, like, let's keep afloat until we're through this thing, and then we can get back to normal. And it's not about, you know, none of us are going to be doing great financially anytime soon. But we gotta do everything we can and to that's sort the of thing stick we together. Did. We actually lowered like the entry fees in the world a little bit more expensive. So we just sort of did a, a basic, much cheaper fee just for that reason. You know, people are going to be struggling a little bit, and it was our way to sort of give back to everybody that stays down. Yeah, if it was, they want to come school, it's 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 there, and the footing's good, and the jumps are nice. And uh, did you go, Rick? I haven't gone yet. Right. So you have one next weekend. We the just decided first. we were yeah right. we're going to do one not this coming weekend next weekend. Um, and I, we've already got like Liz Holiday's going to bring a bunch, and I know Leslie and Leslie are going to come. So yeah, it's uh, it's it, it's worth it. Do you know it's worth doing? It was you know? it was great. It was yeah. super helpful. How so did I appreciate you get into show it. jump design? Oh God, when I when I was in England, or actually when I left high school, I went. I moved to Scotland and worked at Glen Eagles in Scotland, mm -hmm. and then did my BHS training there, and then they ran. BSJA recognize jumper shows. So I got interested in it by helping the course designer mm -hmm. at, that would come in. And then when I came here in 94, oh, I'm old, 94, um, I, um, I went to Millbrook Equestrian Center and they obviously have the horse trials there. So I got to be able, because you didn't need a license to build up to advance. So I could do the horse trials. Um, and I did that for God knows how many years, 14 years, but picked up other stuff. So that's really. So I've got a question as a show jump designer. <clears throat> when you're coming in and in setting up your, your course, obviously you want to make it challenging. What's, what's kind of your philosophy in presenting a course to, let's just say, an advanced group of riders that are coming in for advanced course? Sure, sure. And obviously you don't want 50 rounds of clear jump rounds, right? right? 
No, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> but you also don't want 50 rounds of not clear. Exactly. So, so what is your philosophy when you go in to try to test the level of what you've got to do at that level? Where is your, your points of interest where you say that's going to cause a problem? I think the, the biggest thing to me when I design any course, whether it's beginner, novice, or advanced, it's, it's, it's flow. The course should flow. Right. That, that's what I try and have. You know, if, if it's too twisty, turny, pulley, kicky, I don't, I don't like to watch it. And uh, I don't think it's fair on the event horses especially. Right. But I think for the upper levels, it really depends on where I build. Obviously, just taking in all the factors, the, 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 the footing, you know, the, the arena size, all that sort of stuff. Um, so those are, those are a couple of the factors that I, that I do. And obviously, the type of competition, if it's an advanced or if it's a four-star, I, I can ramp it up a little bit. Right. And, I, and I, you know, even an, uh, Joe Meyer said this one time, I'm known for my tight time allowed, but I can make the time allowed a factor if I want to enough without sure. being unfair. And I know that's a topic of discussion, but I do think it's a, it's not just jumping the jumps, it's going the right speed. And I, I, I kind of talk to people and I say, I like to educate. And I mean that in a good way. You know, I, I, my job, and Richard Jeffrey taught me this, my job is to set a course appropriate for the level. I, it's not my job to get a winner. It's my job to set the course that you guys are all going to jump um, right. and be fair at the level that you're going to do. If you ride well and your horses jump well, or you get lucky, you jump clean. If you make a mistake or you have a bit of bad luck, you have a rail down. Um, and that's, that's I, I keep that philosophy in mind, you know, trying to do that. So I think one of the things that I'm always interested in and I try to promote on this show and, mm-hmm. and everything I do is there's so many ways to make a living and make a life in horses. Sure. And you just mentioned Richard Jeffrey mm-hmm. and how I know, you know, he's a, a mentor sure. and somebody that you have learned a lot from. So if there's somebody out there who is interested in getting into course design, yeah. how do how did you, like, I know you came over and you worked at uh, Millbrook, right? Yeah, sure. And you were a trainer there uh-huh. for a while. And then at some point you decided, I'm going to do this course design yeah. thing. So, you know, just if you can briefly touch on how did you make that decision? And then if somebody does make that decision, how do you recommend they get into it? Like, I've course designed poorly <laughs> at some local hunter shows in Wisconsin. And they had me once, which is never a good sign for a course yeah, designer. You're not coming back. I did not get invited back. So, but how do you recommend to somebody, like, if they want to get into it, how do they do it? It's, it's, it's tricky. There aren't that many show jumping course designers in eventing. If somebody wants to do it, obviously the best thing is Apprentice. You can look on the USEF website. I'm a USEF jumper course designer, which obviously feeds over to the U, um, to the USEA, but there is a USEA show jumping, eventing show jumping course designers. But license. if you wanted to design show jumping mm-hmm. and that's your thing, yep. you really want to become a USEF jumping yeah. designer. Yeah. And there's a small R first, then your large R, and then you can go up into the FEI. So how much time is committed to doing this? If you it's, started it's, and did it yourself and you wanted to become it's not easy. Like it's not meant if you've got the knack for it and you've got some skill and you've got some feel, that that's the easy part. It's actually time consuming. It's, it's like any becoming any official. It can be a little bit expensive um, and time consuming. I had to make the decision to give up. I gave up running a barn and doing the jumpers to, because I was getting more calls to do the course designing more full time. But really, you know, you have to apprentice at three shows, you know, three jumper shows with with big time course designers. Um, You have to take the jumper judges exam. You have to pass that. There's lots of little things that you can find out the way. I've always said to people, if anybody wants any help or wants to come apprentice or wants to come to assist because they're interested in it, I'm always open. I know Mark is Mark Donovan is too, and obviously Richard's been a big help. But we, it would be great to find a way to obviously get more people interested in becoming a show jumping course designer because right. they are few and far between, especially in the eventing world. So I just want to throw it out there that my favorite thing is I like fence one mm-hmm. to be a triple bar. Okay. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Okay. Like if ever I'm at an event and I'm in a good place sure. and you're the course designer on Sunday, you could just... I'm just saying. It happens. It right. does happen. Right. It, it, you know, that's a little bit more common, but how's the eight strides going? I'm getting year, better. Year everything goes, Chris he needs designs. all related distances and he needs he, to be able to count. He can't count to eight. I can't. That many fingers. So well, because eight. eight is one more than, you can than seven, seven. Yeah. and it's one less than nine. Yeah. See? 
And that's complicated. <laughs> no, it's, uh, but that's but that's fun. I mean, I, I've built up a good rapport relationship with a, with a lot of the event writers, and, and I respect them what they do, um, and, and and I think they respect what I do, and and it's good. I, I learn from them. I learn from listening to them, watching you guys, um, and I think that they're interested in my opinion too. A lot well, absolutely. Opinion. I remember, and and we're running out of time here, but I just you know as an example of that, I remember last year at Jockey Club, I had a rail. And the first thing I did was get on my phone and right. say, Chris, what do you think happened? Why'd I have that down? And you said, yeah, you needed to rebalance, yeah, you idiot. Take a breath. Was, that, was that the skinny gate? Uh, it was, I think, the third or fourth fence on course, and I just came hammering through the turn a little bit too much yeah, trying to stay to forward, balance. and I needed a half halt. Mm-hmm. And it was great. You know, again, everything in life is about networking and knowing people and building yeah. relationships. And I always it's so like nice. seeing that he's the course designer because your courses you. are terrific. Yeah, they're great courses. And they're always fun they to compete do, over. They do but flow. They are terrific. They don't. They don't. And you uh, learn how to ride you. eight strides. Exactly. So, exactly. And learn how to balance. Right. So, Chris, thanks for joining us. Thanks, thanks for being with us. Really it. appreciate it. And make sure you tell your girlfriend, yes. Justine. He said a lot. Yeah, and tell her to work on her push-ups because it's about time she gets rolling on that some more. (laughs) Justine, let's go. Uh, What's going on? I'm trying to help. I am trying to help. So, listen, Rick, we're going to be back in a couple weeks and really exciting. We've got Karen O'Connor. We do. And beyond that, actually, we don't know. Actually, we have Rob Burke. Okay. And then... uh, Mike Winter. Mike Winter. Yeah, there you go. So we've got... I think you were going to ask a couple other people probably haven't gotten there yet. Right, exactly. So we're going to be back in a couple weeks' time with Karen O'Connor, Rob Burke, and Mike Winter. Sounds good. So Bye, thanks for joining thanks us, everybody. Man. Stay safe. And remember, get your mask for the horse shows and don't cause a fuss. Rick Wallace. And I have John Holly here with me. Three phases, dressage, cross-country, show jump. And you're out on course and something's going wrong or going right. You know how to react to what they're doing built originally to be a schooling facility and so everything's set up very conveniently 